you mentioned earlier that uh, you transitioned from uh, television to comics. How was that transition for you uh, as far as writing? I guess also, I guess dealing with storyboards, was that easier for you? Um, I actually, when I decided I was going to do a, a graphic novel, I took a year to study the form. I had read comics in a long time and um, I, I went into my comic book store and I, I asked Ralph, you know, tell me, what should I read? And he gave me things like Saga and Last Man Standing. And so I, I just read, I was like blown away at how good these things were. So I just read and read and read and then I got comic book scripts and I read and read and read. Um, it's a hard transition because you have to be everything. You have to be the set decorator, the costumer, you know, the director, <laughs> the, the locations manager. I mean, you have to play every single role of, of, of you know, set when you're doing a comic. I also bought some books and learned how to write through panels. Um, Scott McCloud, right? Um, yeah, Scott McCloud. Um, and I took some seminars uh, on how to do it because it's a very specific art to be able to tell a story in panels. And I still made mistakes in my first, you know, four. Um, I feel like I'm better at it now, but I'm not perfect. <laughs> And some, yeah, sometimes we have to go back and fix things. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was it was a, a hard transition, but really fun, really fun. And you are, and you want questions? Oh, okay. In terms of world building, how hard was it for you to create the world that your characters are set in? Well, my world building was... Um, my character's in a different country, and so thankfully I visited that country, so I was able to kind of take the stories from being there to over here. Um, I think, like, reading books on, like, my, my character's about bounty hunting, so, like, reading books on that kind of helped me world build and what their lives are like and what it's like being a bounty hunter in Baltimore, because that's where most of the story is based out of, so, for me, it's just researching, looking at pictures, what she says, like, in the comic world, in the graphic novel, you're the set decorator, you're the director, you're doing their hair, so, like, you're doing what they're wearing, so that's why I have a whole t-shirt line over here, because it's like, if they're going to be wearing clothes, it might as well be something I create. So I have t-shirts that I did put in the book and I print them out and sell them just well. So it's like, yeah, it's a lot. What about you? Oh yeah, research is critical. Um, since mine is uh, an alternate history uh, with science and paranormal involved, uh, I do try to make the science accurate when I can, but sometimes fiction has to overrides that. Uh, but because it's steeped in American history and I do tweak that, I had to do a lot of research in uh, governmental systems and where we were, you know, back in 1812 and make everything consistent. I mean, that's the key to world building is you have to make everything consistent and uh, relatable. I mean, so little, little pieces need to be relatable to your audience. these people that are more the stream of consciousness like I'll just start writing on something and it somehow makes sense I know that's probably that sounds like the worst thing ever um, but also it's just like from your personal experiences like hmm, I wonder what a self-absorbed jerk is let me see and so when I draw a demon bitch like I draw her with more attention to detail and her stupid set of friends right because they consider themselves more important but when you look at people in the world when they interact they're just shades of people. They're kind of nondescript, or they're not important. They don't have too many identifying marks. Why? Because she, they don't care. It's all about them. So that's how I kind of view it as that. It's kind of like a little dig at people like that. But then that, that's what I do. I just have rage when I do that. Your world is rage. <laughs> Um, what I 
in, I, I had read the Mothman prophecies, and there were, you know, um, in that book, he um, postulates that there are these gates that open up and, and the monsters come through. Um, and I love that idea. So I said it in New York, so I didn't have to build that part of the world. Um, I said it in a place that was real, that people could relate to. And then um, what I created was a gate. And the monsters and the gods that come through are from our mythology. So I just went through and I found monsters from all different cultures. And, um, you know, just created, uh, I created a world in New York. It's, it's sort of around veterans. There's homeless people. There are veterans that have come back and they lost their arm and they're now firemen and things like that. And, and so I just created a world of characters and then monsters come and, and go through the gate. All right, so that completes our panel. Thank you guys so much for listening. That actually concludes ShiroCon for today. It's five o'clock. Thank you guys so much for coming out. Um, if you haven't already, get a picture on the Shiro Comics pink carpet back.